Okay. So I am Shannon Sampson, and, and this is my colleague Joan Mazur, and we're from the University of Kentucky. And today we'll be talking about bringing a constellation of evidence into focus through an ASH center-wide contribution analysis evaluation approach. So we hope today to share with you uh, what we've learned about contribution analysis, what it is, and then how helpful it has been for us to uh, incorporate evaluative thinking into the work that we do. Um, so I'm Shannon Sampson, and I do the evaluation I lead the evaluation for the Southeast Center for Agricultural Health and Injury Prevention. And I also am the director of the Evaluation Center. So I work with lots of different types of evaluations with lots of different funders, uh, from this sort of agricultural work to specific education programs. Uh, we work with medicine. Um, we work with just a, a wide range of different types of programs. So Joan, if you want to introduce yourself, I'm Joan Mazur. Um, I'm the deputy director at the Southeast Center, and I've been working in agricultural safety and health for the past 26 years. And I'm um, sure some of you who are viewing this, uh, we are friends and colleagues from way back and long ago. But I've been very encouraged by the inclusion of uh, an evaluation, uh, a formal evaluation center team uh, for both our centers. and. Um, Shannon and I have engaged in this process um, of understanding this new approach of contribution analysis as it applies to the work we do in agricultural safety and health. So uh, there are a couple of challenges coming into the, this work. Um, the, the deputy director and um, a friend, colleague, Wayne Sanderson, talked about a lot of the challenges that he faced with evaluating the center and a lot of the frustrations. And so this is true, I think, of a lot of ag centers. And Joan, you can probably speak more to this even, um, that the challenges include the fact that studying impact is much more difficult than studying outputs. And so a lot of times evaluations will focus on outputs because counts are easier than really seeing change. Um, it's also hard a lot of times to move the needle on the rate of injury and fatality um, or to, to point to a specific targeted in, intervention and say that that's really making a difference in this really broad um, impact down the road. Also attributing long-term outcomes to one intervention is not always logical. It's just We just know that there are a lot of factors that go into affecting an outcome. But it's really important to know if initiatives are making a difference. And so how do we go about thinking about uh, if the work that's being done really is moving toward the outcomes that are expected? And those of us that um, switched over to really focusing on logic models a couple of years ago, which was a big uh, change up for the kinds of evaluation we've been doing for the centers for, for some time, um, so we had this phase of getting used to logic models and how they operate in our planning and thinking and evaluating. And now, though, we've sort of moved to what we sort of call the, the right side of the logic model, which is moving from outputs and things we push out there or our products to the actual impact. You know, are we really um, reducing exposure to hazard? Are we really um, doing things that will affect the rate of injury fatality or the behavioral changes needed to affect the rate of injury fatality. Yeah. So the, the uh, ECO group stands for Evaluators Center of Coordinators and Outreach Directors, and it was, it was formed, um, I wish I remembered exactly when, but it may have been 2012, uh, 2013. And again, it was, it was this effort to really focus the ag centers on this newer approach uh, and accountability, being good stewards of the public's money as that gets tighter and tighter each year through evaluation. And so the eco group uh, participated, um, you know, as a as a collective among all the ag centers and the National Children's Center um, to work on evaluation. And so we've been doing that over this year. So this was the group that NIOSH came to, the eco group, you know, to talk about the contribution analysis they were conducting retrospectively, and also talk to us about how we might formulate um, uh, 
small groups, breaking the ego group into centers that had could find some anchoring issues that several centers had worked on over time or collectively uh, to apply and learn more about contribution analysis and how that actually works. So a little bit of background on what contribution analysis is. Uh, it is considered a qualitative evaluation method that explores attribution through assessing the contribution a program is making to observed results. And so it's really, we, we talk about this constellation of evidence, it really is about building a body of evidence to, to make a case that, that some kind of intervention really is leading to some kind of an outcome. I wanted to make the point about qualitative analysis that qualitative analysis is are two things. Qualitative analysis rely on evidence, um, so I think I think it's important to say that, and it's also in, uh, relies on empirical evidence. I think we tend to think of empirical evidence as being only quantitative, but that's just simply not the case. And um, so, qualitative evaluations do not imply uh, a less rigorous approach. And I really want to make that point because we build a case the same way we build, we've built our entire uh, legal system in our country on case-based reasoning and goodness of fit to an outcome or a judgment. And to that point as well, it's, it doesn't, being called a qualitative method doesn't mean that we only use qualitative methodology that as we've worked on our own contribution analysis, we've pulled in many studies that are quantitative studies. We might even include a, um, a quasi-experimental design, but it's one piece that plays into telling this rich story around what's happening. So to begin the contribution analysis, we think about a theory of change and so building out that logic model with stakeholders, which is how interventions are understood to produce a series of results. So it's really important that you come together with people who are implementing or who are um, designing the study to really um, map out what they envision should be happening and how they envision getting to that point. Uh, and then after that, uh, the group would gather evidence through interviews, data analysis, document review, there may be published articles that count as evidence, and then and other methods in order to prove or disprove a particular intervention's contribution to a particular outcome. And then after that, you assess the quality of the evidence against some kind of criteria, and you determine if your evidence supports or challenges this, this outcome. And then finally, you pull together the evidence to develop a story of the contribution of the intervention so just to give you an example of some of the work that we've been doing, uh, Joan and I have been working on the ROPS, the Rollover Protection uh, System. We have a project that's called the Cost Effective Ones, but other centers um, are using both the, the crops and other engineering solutions with, with, uh, with rollover protection systems for tractors. So as we came into this work, we partnered with, with groups from across the nation that were also doing the rollover protection systems. So we came into this from the crops perspective, but we had the opportunity to speak across the nation. And as we did that, it really helped us to look at the work that we were doing. And so as we were building this contribution analysis on a national level, we began to really think about how can we work this into the work that we are doing at our own center. And so we specifically are talking today about what contribution analysis looks like within our center for the crops program. So we began with a logic model and we won't work all the way through this logic model, but like any logic model, it has resources that are, that are used for specific activities that would then lead to short term outcomes, medium term outcomes, and then long term impacts. And then after you build the logic model, the next thing you would do with contribution analysis is to build an evidence table. So what we've pulled in today is a, a this is our kind of messy evidence table that we put together. One of the things that's most and most um, informative to me, so this crops project was actually an idea I came up with in 2014 and 15, 
after a NIOSH um, conference with intramural and extramural researchers, and Dave Hard and Tony McKenzie were presenting their um, years and years of research on the cost-effective rollover protection structures that they had, um, the roll bar that they had engineered, and that had crops, these approved plans on the NIOSH site. So the idea was, we've got these plans, we have all these unprotected tractors, we have ag mechanics classes that should be able to do this kind of work with project-based learning and experiential learning um, and safety, farm safety curriculum that is in, in some cases we found rather weak in some schools, to be honest. But this really, you know, does the curriculum really assist students in taking ownership? That's one of our hopes. Um, but do we really have evidence of that? Um, so we looked at uh, when we say journal articles, these are articles that our team has published about the work we've done, just so you know. Um, but when we really looked at that, we really weren't, we weren't interviewing students along that line. We weren't collecting um, any pre-post data that specifically talked about um, kind of future leadership, how this might affect their, um, their role in their community or their own safety practices should they become owners or, or um, decision makers on farms in their own community. So, you know, it was, it, it's, a, it's a little challenging to go through and think about, like, these are the things we're doing. Here's what we have that we think speaks to this, but then really looking at it and having an external evaluator, which I am extremely in favor of having for um, many reasons, but saying, well, you know, this isn't really a strong uh, asset to prove to prove this point and so then we we move along and and we'll talk about how that plays into like next steps you know as we go along uh, we do have some other evidence though that we found did have some um more more strength toward uh impact and toward the outcomes we were looking for uh, another example is um that an intermediate outcome would be that farmers do correctly build and install crops to reduce exposure to unprotected tractor hazard. We not only have these um, the, this evidence from the farmers, but even some of the teachers that we brought back in our summer institute, we bring back when we get a new group each year. Um, and we have been interviewing students now and teachers to see if we can capture those kind of, um, that, that kind of narrative evidence as well, um, not just for the farmer who gets the, the tractor, but taking a look at the students in the classes and the teachers as well. Um, and they're all high impact folks, high influencers in communities, especially ag ed teachers, very influential. And so right now we're, we're doing, um, well, we're not exactly doing it because of COVID-19 shut down all the schools in the whole Southeast, like it has everywhere. But we have, um, Introductory, introductory letters from um, the ag teachers in these communities. And as soon as we're able to really um, have the ag teachers communicating clearly with us and so that they can communicate with those they put on uh, crops in their community, then we'll send a follow-up letter with an introduction from them and so forth. So there's a lot of really synergistic sharing going on and a lot of thinking along the same lines, you know, like how do we produce this evidence? Because we can do it, we can produce evidence. But this contribution analysis and this format has really focused us in on, um, you know, the, the R2P, the theory, the research to practice pieces of this that we really need to capture to, to look at impact. Um, and you can see um, along the sides, as Shannon said, this is not our polished work. We're trying to share with you a, a really important collaborative, cognitive process here of having to really build toward contribution analysis um, findings to, to really go to that next level of, of looking at, at impact and change. You know, what's changing here? How do we know we're changing? How do we gather evidence? But a few things that we are learning as we learn this is that it is retrospective. So particularly for a project like this that's been going for many years, it does give you the opportunity, give, has given us the opportunity to look and look back and see how the work, what evidence do we, already exists to point toward a lot of these expected outcomes. But it's also very prospective that um, it, it helps us to be reflective and plan for the future. So if we feel like we don't have 
a good body of evidence to point to this yet, well then how do we get that evidence? How do we know if this is making a difference? What are some of the questions we could ask in data sources that would help us tell that story? Um, and to help us to, to do a check, to, to know if it, we are moving in that direction. We found that it's a very helpful conversation guide. So uh, we actually, Joan mentioned meeting with this graduate student. We actually gave him our evidence tables and had him look through and it spurred on so much conversation around the kinds of data that he had been collecting. And there, are, we have many questions that we can explore using existing data um, just by looking together at the hopes for this project. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities moving forward, a lot of lenses to take to the data moving forward. Uh, it does help keep us focused on outcomes and reflective about our work. Uh, you know, one of the things that's true about a logic model for us is that we set out with the theory, but but it's messy, and uh, you know, projects are messy. Life is messy. We've experienced a very messy season where um, you might be thrown a curveball, and and a logic model can change to be responsive to that. So it should always be reflective of the work that's being done, but it also oftentimes helps to center and and re kind of get a group back on track to think about. Um, where everybody is expecting to go and then how do we know if we're getting there. So it really does, to, to finish with my list, is it, it encourages evaluative thinking. Really uh, testing assumptions, it helps get all the assumptions on the table and then gives an opportunity to, um, to search for evidence to really decide are, are we doing what we think we're doing. So uh, we are hoping that, that the work that we're presenting to you is a conversation starter that that you can see that there's value in this work and really it, it just um, we have found it to be very helpful very uh, conversational and uh, and just it, it has it has really focused a lot of the work that we're doing so we are happy to answer questions that you have share more about the work that we're doing or the journey that we're on as we um, work to think about the and, and again take inventory of the work uh, and the evidence that we have so if you have questions you can feel free to reach out to me I'm Shannon Sampson or Joan Mazur um, both of us at uky.edu and we'd be happy to um, just collaborate with you and and share our experiences with this work I just want to say it's, it's just really been a very um, engaging and fruitful experience not only um, within our center, but across centers. Uh, just a great opportunity to really ask the hard questions, but have a way to get at some of the answers, things that we, we really deeply care about, you know, which is ag safety and health for farmers, farm family, farm youth, um, who, are, who are exposed really daily to, to health and um, uh, safety uh, hazards. So uh, this has been extremely helpful. Uh, and those of us that have been here a long time have seen this journey, <laughs> I guess it's a good word, but this, this, this um, focus on evaluation and, and really taking evaluation seriously over time and how this is evolving. And I think contribution analysis is going to prove to be a very productive step for us all.